everyone, my name is Lena and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be telling you about the time that I went into DK and I had to go to the hospital. This has only happened to me one time. Like, this is the first time I've ever had to go to the hospital since my diagnosis. So I thought it was a good story to share with you and kind of spread awareness about DKA. So right from the start, if you don't know what DKA stands for, it stands for a diabetic ketoacidosis. I looked up what it basically is so I can explain it to you better, so I'm going to be reading this off here. DKA occurs when your body produces high levels of blood acids called ketones and the condition develops when your body can't produce enough insulin. Insulin normally plays a key role in helping your blood sugar enter your cells. Without enough insulin, your body begins to break down fat as fuel. This process produces a buildup of acids in the bloodstream called ketones, eventually leading to diabetic ketoacidosis if untreated. So some of the symptoms of DKA are excessive thirst, frequent urination, vomiting, abdominal pain, weakness or fatigue, shortness of breath, pretty scented breath, confusion, and then more specific signs of DKA which can be detected through home, blood, and urine testing kits include high blood sugar level and high ketone levels in your urine. Some of these symptoms are similar to the symptoms for type 1 diabetes and that is because a lot of people are in DKA when they are diagnosed as a type 1 diabetic. So just being aware of the symptoms of DKA, it could really help you in the future if you ever are experiencing DKA. You could like recognize it faster and get treatment faster. But let's get on to my personal experience with DKA. So this was, I'm looking on my phone because this time I actually took a few pictures to show you guys because I figured I would do a story time about it. Okay, so it all basically started August 16th, and on August 16th, my blood sugar was pretty out of control on the Dexcom. Like, I'll show you today. This is what a, not a typical day. Today's been, like, better than average. So this is today. And on August 16th, what it looked like was it would go from 400 and drop, and then go to 400, drop, and it would go so fast for no reason. I felt perfectly fine. I didn't feel sick, nothing. The whole week I felt fine. Everything was feeling fine. I just couldn't control my blood sugar for some reason. It would go after I would eat or anything. It would just shoot up to 400 super, super fast, like uncontrollably. It wasn't from the food, clearly. And then it would just all of a sudden shoot down super fast too. And then it just keep doing that the whole day. And I felt perfectly fine. So I was like just confused on why I was doing that. So I went to bed that night and everything was fine. I did change my pump site that night too. So I went to bed and everything seemed fine. So I wake up the next morning to my dad coming into my room. It's about 5 a.m. and he asked me to check my blood sugar manually because the Dexcom had been reading high which means over 400 basically all night. So I checked and it was, I'm trying to remember, I, it was over 300 and so I went ahead and took a correction and I realized I really was like feeling kind of nauseous and I didn't really feel right. So I got up to the bathroom because I had to pee super super bad. So I got up and normally like it's not normal for me to have to go pee in the middle of the night. So that was kind of the first like major sign that hey something's probably wrong and when I was getting up to go to the bathroom like walking into there cuz here my rooms right here and then you have to go down the hall to get to the bathroom Well, when I was walking there I felt like super dizzy kind of like it wasn't like a low blood sugar dizzy it was just like I feel so nauseous and I'm like I feel like I'm gonna pass out or something like something is not right it I like stood up and all the blood like rushed to my head and it 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 just felt so weird. So I walked there and I don't know, I was kind of a little bit concerned just cause like I felt so weird. I'd never felt that before. And I walked back into my room finally and laid back down and I had taken a correction after I checked and it was 300. So I was thinking, okay, I should be coming down now. Everything should be fine. Buddy normally likes to get up around six or seven. So he started to bark cause he wanted to get up and I was going to get up and take him outside so he could go to the bathroom. And I tried to get up and I felt 
so bad like I can't even explain what it felt like it was like the same feeling that I had when I was walking to the bathroom so I couldn't even sit up and also whenever I went back to bed after I went to the bathroom I couldn't like fall asleep too good because it hurt it felt I felt nauseous so I felt like I needed to throw up basically and whenever I would lay on my stomach or my back it was terrible like I was about to throw up everywhere so I had to lay on my side and I just could not get comfortable I couldn't really go back to sleep after I got up at 5 so when everybody was barking I was gonna go ahead and get up and take him out to go to the bathroom and I tried to sit up and I just could not do it I felt so bad my blood sugar was still high it hadn't come down from the correction and so I could not take him outside it was just terrible so then I called my mom and dad both and my sister was home but she was asleep and her phone is always on silent so even if I called her she wouldn't answer because she was sleeping and she couldn't hear it ring which I, I it's really annoying because she always has it on silent so I called both of them and talked to them about it and I told them that I just could not get up and I tried to stand up and I felt so weak I had to lay back down I was about to throw up everywhere I was felt like I was gonna pass out it, I've never felt that before and it was just really scary so my grandma went ahead and came over and she fixed some it's real it's a weird combination but she made me like some breakfast so I had this ham like lunch meat ham and then peanut butter and crackers and I couldn't really eat it because my throat was so sore my throat was hurting really really bad and I tried to drink water that hurt my throat too I'm not sure why my throat was hurting because that's not like not a sign of DK really but it hurt to eat so I couldn't really eat anything my blood sugar was still high it wasn't coming down and so I decided to go ahead and go downstairs because my bed was getting uncomfortable and I have pretty big windows so it was super bright in my room I couldn't get I couldn't fall back asleep because it wasn't dark so I decided to move downstairs I had a hard time getting downstairs because I still felt terrible when I stood up I felt like I was gonna pass out still so I finally made it downstairs laid on the couch and it was just miserable down there I laid down there for probably about an hour just watching TV trying to eat some of the food but I really couldn't because my throat was hurting so bad just laid there watching TV for a while I did that until about noon and then my dad came home for lunch real quick from work and he brought me some soup from Panera because that kind of sounded good but I knew I probably wouldn't be able to eat it. But I wanted to try to eat something because I was pretty hungry at that point since I hadn't eaten anything all day. He came down there and he was he brought my food down and he was like walking, re getting ready to go back upstairs. And I just threw up. Like I had a bowl down there so I threw up in the bowl and my stomach was just, it felt so bad. So after I threw up, I felt 10 times better. I could actually relax then at that point and get some sleep and it didn't last long so like I can't remember how long but a little bit after I threw up I started feeling absolutely terrible the most discomfort I've ever felt pretty much in my entire life basically I was so dehydrated my legs and my arms and shoulders ached so bad like my legs ache every once in a while if I ran and I'm, I was a little bit dehydrated. No, this was like a hundred times worse. I'm not even joking how bad it was. I could not sit still. I couldn't lay there. I was literally crying. I was trying to drink water to get hydrated, but it just wasn't working. And I'd say I laid there for about an hour and it was just so miserable. I. I hope I never have to feel that again. I hope none of you guys ever have to feel that. It's so uncomfortable laying there with all those aches. And then my chest was starting to hurt a little bit too. I'm not sure what was causing that, but that was starting to hurt too. And my mom's a teacher, so it was around time for her to be getting home. So she came home as soon as she could. And I was crying. I said, I, I think I just need to go to the hospital because I'm so dehydrated. These aches, I cannot stand it any longer. I cannot just lay here like this. It's, it's too, it's too much to handle. Like I couldn't just lay there any longer. So we hurried up and grabbed some of my stuff. Like literally we didn't even get hardly anything. We grabbed my purse 
and shoes and then we left and it was about a 45 minute drive to the hospital so that was the worst car ride of my life too I was like laying there with my head down it was so miserable and on the way there the aches were starting to get a little bit better by the time we got there it wasn't nearly as bad as it had been when I was laying on the couch downstairs once we got there, we went to the ER at Children's, which is where I go for my endocrinologist appointments. So they checked my blood sugar. I forgot to tell you guys, I kept taking corrections throughout the day and it just, my number would not come down. I increased my basal rate, my number would not come down. And the number one mistake I think I made was I never checked for ketones before we went to the hospital, which I probably should have done that, but I'm sure I had ketones because when we got to the hospital, they checked them and I had large ketones, which is the largest it can go. And so when I got there, they checked my blood sugar and it was, I think it was 410. So that's really high. On the drive there, it was 362. So it had gone up at that point. When we got there, I got into a room there. I had to pee really bad. So I went, they checked for ketones. Like I said, they were large. And they went ahead and were trying to start an IV. And this was a major struggle because I was so dehydrated they couldn't get a vein to work to get the IV in. So they tried this arm, this arm, and then they tried my hand, which I didn't really know they could do IVs there, but I guess they can. And none of them were working, so they had to try this arm again, and finally they got one to work. And then they started me on fluids, and then also they did an insulin drip to bring my blood sugar down. They kept checking my blood sugar every 30 minutes and the next time they checked it was over 500 which is the highest it's ever been in my life. That was about the turning point because after it hit over 500 it started to come back down and it never went back up that high. The insulin drip started to bring my number down. My ketones finally started to come down. They were only large right when I got there and then after they, right after they started the IV the ketones started to come down. Once I started getting hydrated again the aches went away. That was the main reason why I wanted to go to the hospital was because the aches were just so bad and I needed it to stop. I was literally crying. It hurt. It was like so uncomfortable. I have a picture of the IV in and then also they put another IV in this arm but they didn't like connect it to any fluids or anything. They just kept it in there so if they needed to draw blood they wouldn't have to stick me every time. They could just draw it from the IV. So I had two IVs in my arms. I'll insert the picture right here so you can see it. My IVs like got really sore. You can't really bend your arms or do anything so I literally was sitting there like this like and I like to sleep like this kind of like my arms up and on my side and I couldn't sleep because I had to spend the night that night. Before I went to bed that night my blood sugar was down below 300 which I'm so glad it came down. The aches went away and I forgot to mention I threw up whenever I was in the ER and then also whenever I went up to my room, I threw up again before I went to bed. But after that, I didn't throw up anymore. I I just, I felt fine and then all of a sudden I'd feel nauseous and I had to throw up. So it's kind of funny, whenever I was in the ER, I, I went to the bathroom one time and I was standing there because somebody was in there and I was like, oh my gosh, I feel nauseous. So I went into the bathroom and I just threw up all over the floor and it was a big mess and I felt really bad, but I was like, uh, sorry. <laughs> So I threw up all over that floor and then luckily when I was in my room up in the hospital I had like a little bucket to throw up. And I think throwing up really hurt my throat because the next day I literally could not eat anything. Like I could but I had to eat the tiniest bites. It was hilarious. I was eating like this big of a bite. So it took me about 45 minutes to eat a meal. They gave me a Lantus shot at around 2 a.m. because they told me to take my pump off since they were doing the insulin drip. So they gave me the Lantus and then um, I got to finally eat the next morning because I hadn't eaten anything at all that day. And then August 18th, the next day, the next morning when I woke up, I was in the hospital. I got to eat breakfast and then I also ate lunch there. So like I said, my throat was hurting really bad, but my stomach felt fine. Everything else felt fine. I felt stronger to like walk. I didn't feel like I was gonna pass out anymore. The ketones came all the way down. My blood sugar came down into the 200s, into the lower 200s actually, so that's really good. And everything was looking good. They were saying that it was looking like I was going to be able to go home that day. And so after I ate lunch, I had, um, I had tater tots and a hamburger. It was really good. After I ate that, I got to go home. They told me to drink a ton, a ton of water, and I had been. 
and I got home, checked my blood sugar, and it was over 400 again. At this point, I didn't have my Dexcom on because it wasn't working. One of the tests they had to do, I think, interfered with my Dexcom and it failed the sensor, so I didn't have it on at that point. And I got home, my blood sugar was over 400 again. So I was literally freaking out. I checked for ketones and I had small ketones again. So I was drinking so much water, you won't believe it. I was drinking like, I have my cup over there, it was about this big. I was drinking that, one of them every 30 minutes. It was insane. I had to pee so much just trying to flush out the ketones because I was just confused about what was going on, what was causing all of this. And finally my numbers started to come down that night. It was around 180 when I went to bed. I turned on my insulin pump basal rate again Plus I had the Lantus going, so that helped bring it down a lot back into range. And then I actually had to eat a snack before bed that night because it was a little bit low. And the next day, it was perfectly fine. Everything was good. I was drinking a ton of water and I still am trying to drink water like more than I used to because I really, over the summer, I didn't drink that much water. So now I'm trying to stay on it, stay on top of it, so this never has to happen again. And honestly, we don't know what caused the DKA because my insulin pump was working. If it wasn't working, my number would have just kept going up and it wasn't. I'm thinking that it, definitely I was dehydrated, so that probably had a cause in it. And then also, I think I was getting a little bit sick because I was throwing up and I didn't feel the best. So I think it was a combination of a bunch of things that just caused it to happen. I just wanted to share this with you guys. So if you were curious, I just wanted to let you guys know that I was in the hospital because I never shared it with you guys. So hopefully you enjoyed. And then sometime I'll be doing my diagnosis story, but I wanted to get this up while it's fresh on my mind and I can remember like, all the details and stuff. Be sure to give it a thumbs up and comment down below if you've ever been in DKA. Hopefully you haven't. It's it's pretty scary. It's not fun. That was the first time I've ever had to go to the hospital since I was diagnosed. So it was it was really scary and I looked like crap that whole time. So None of the, that's why none of the pictures have my face in them because I literally looked so bad. I looked in the mirror at the hospital in the bathroom and I was like, I was embarrassed because I looked and underneath my eyes, they were like purple under my eyes. I was like exhausted, dehydrated. I just looked like a hot mess. So that's why you didn't get to see my face in any of the pictures. Make sure to subscribe down below. I post new videos all the time. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.